Welcome back. So if we look at Boyle's law, at very high pressures, the volume of the gas particles contributes to the volume of the gas, so the volume will not decrease as expected. Charles's law, at very low temperatures, the volume of the gas will not decrease as expected because of the forces of repulsion as well as the volume of the particles. Gay-Lussac's law, the conclusion is at very low temperatures, the kinetic energy of the particles are low, so they move at lower speeds. They will collide less with each one another, as well as the container they're in, so lower pressure is experienced. So this is the overall conclusion. On the next slide, I want to go back to your textbook on page 119. So at the bottom of page 119, you'll find uh, four graphs. The first graph, I've already discussed uh, the meaning of that. And the fourth graph um, is what we've done when we discussed Charles's Law. Now, the middle two graphs, I'm going to redraw them here to make them more visible. This graph brings Boyle's law into relationship, but they take volume on the y-axis and the inverse of the pressure on the uh, x-axis. Now, for uh, an ideal gas, the relationship is a proportional relationship. The volume is inversely proportional to the pressure, so the volume is directly proportional to the inverse of the pressure, if you want to say it that way. So this is the line for the ideal gas. <clears throat> now, we know that a real gas deviates at high pressure. So if pressure is very high, what is the inverse of pressure? It is very low. So the deviation will take place here where we have low inverse of pressure values. Now, what do we know? We know that the real gas has volume. Particles has volume. And we know that when the pressure is very high, the 1 over P is very low and that at high pressures the volume will not decrease as expected. So this graph deviates from the ideal gas graph line like that. The third graph there on page 119 is a graph of pressure on the y-axis to 1 over volume on the x-axis. So we know for an ideal gas, the relationship is a directly proportional relationship, pressure and 1 over volume. So for a real gas, because the real gas particles has volume, there is a deviation at high pressure, so these are the high pressure areas, and your volume will not decrease as expected.
So what will happen to 1 over volume? So if the volume is going to stay bigger than what it is, what must happen to 1 over volume? It will not increase as expected. So the deviation on this graph is at very high pressures. The 1 over volume will not increase as, as expected. So it's less than what we expect it to be. So the graph goes up as the broken line indicates there. I want us to look at this graph um, of PV against pressure. Now PV is the product of the pressure of the gas um, and the volume of the gas. And if you work through my slides and your textbook, you will um, see that this product means energy, the energy of the particles. I also want to go to um, Boyle's law and just uh, give some basics there. If the pressure of the gas is inversely proportional to the volume, we can change this proportionality sign to an equal sign by getting a constant, the proportionality constant, into the relationship. So if we look at the mathematics, pressure times the volume is constant. So the line for the ideal gas is a straight line parallel to the pressure axis. I want to look at the graph for helium. Now, helium, under most pressure conditions will act as an ideal gas. It's only at very high pressures where the graph goes up steeper than that of the ideal gas. So here the volume of the real gas, helium, starts acting up and the product of volume and pressure will not be constant because of the volume of the gas. In your textbook it says at high pressures hydrogen and helium the smallest uh, real gases therefore the forces of attractive uh, uh, attraction the London forces are negligibly small. The gas molecules move closer together at the high pressures the uh, weak force, repulsive forces exist and the volume of the particles contributes to the total volume so the volume is bigger than expected. So that happens with both helium and hydrogen. Hydrogen's graph slants up right from the start because hydrogen molecules are bigger than helium atoms so the volume will always be uh, bigger and the forces of attraction will also always be bigger. Next to the graph for nitrogen. Now um, I think the part where the nitrogen graph runs uh, uh, higher than the um, that of the ideal gas hydrogen and helium that part is basically explained again uh, already, but this part, I haven't, we haven't looked at this part. Why will PV be less than that for the ideal gas? If you look on page 119, they say at low pressure, gases with a larger molecular mass like nitrogen and carbon dioxide have lower PV values. Why is that so? they have stronger intermolecular forces. So a bigger mass leads to stronger intermolecular forces
and if the um, forces are stronger the molecules are closer to together so the volume of the gas is less than expected and that is why you have a lower product of pressure against volume at the lower pressures. I hope this clarifies everything for you. If you have any questions, please communicate on uh, WhatsApp. Thank you very much.